Dear students, today we will discuss about privacy. So we have discussed already about security, that is saving or protecting you from outer world. So the privacy means that whatever the data which is being generated by you, whether that should be used by someone else, that is legal or illegal and how we can protect that data which has been generated by you. So, first of all, what is privacy? Individual's right to own the data generated by his or her life and activities and to restrict the outer, outward flow of that data. That is the based on, the privacy is based on the uses, the theory of natural rights and generally responds to new information and communication technology in North America, Samuel D. Warren and Louis D. Brandes wrote that privacy is the right to be let alone. So this means that whatever information you have, you have the total control of that information. So previously, when we were not in a digital age, so that was not a problem because the information which we were creating was not made available to the whole community instantaneously. So you were discussing some of the things with some of the people and that was actually the directed communication. However, with the digital age, you go onto Facebook and you post up any message and that instantly made available to everyone. So that's fine. You are making that information available but if you are making that information available to a very restricted group or you are sharing that information with uh, privately with some of the people so this means that you want to protect that information being used by facebook or some other social media site to be uh, broadcasted to all of the world so from where data comes that need to be uh, saved or protected. So one of the thing is the social sites, Facebook, Twitter, where that data is generated. Then there are telephone companies, mobile networks. For example, you are sending messages, you are uh, making calls, you are receiving calls. So all of these activities are generating a lot of data, which might be used in wrong way or in right way. Then smart city cameras on roads are generating your data. So, for example, if you are going on, for example, motorway and that image was captured by a camera and that camera is, uh, that camera can be accessed by some hacker and then that hacker takes that in input that you are going outside of the city and then that hackers uh, make that information available to some of the people who can come at your home when there is nobody. So this means that such information need to be protected. And then there are emails. So you send email to privately to some of the people. However, that email of course goes with lot of in between points. For example, your uh, internet service provider and then different network servers and then it reaches to the email server. So if anyone get that information from your email which is very important and which can be dangerous information if revealed to all of the world, so this means that email content need to be protected. Then uh, there are some personal softwares which you use they create data, your passwords, your login details, so all of such data need to be protected. So how to handle such data in the form of privacy? So one of the thing is that whatever the data in the form of email or, in, or some other messages, so that need to be encrypted. For example, WhatsApp has recently claimed that all of the information they are passing from one person to the second person 
is encrypted. So this means that even if someone in between try to steal that information, they are not going to understand what is written because that information is encrypted. And then you can uh, make use of anonymizing proxies or anonymizing networks. So this means that if I want to access some of the uh, server on the internet, so I'm using a proxy. So this means that the server doesn't know or the other network users doesn't know that who am I? So I'm using a proxy of another server or other computer. So this means that my information, if stolen, cannot be uh, mapped that this information belongs to me. So that is a anonymous information which doesn't have any name. So uh, you might have seen uh, the privacy information of Google, MSN, WhatsApp, for example, these are the links. You can go into the, these links and can see that what kind of information and privacy information they have made available for their users. And then there are some, some of the laws like EPIC, Electronic Privacy Information Center. So this center is a non-profit research center in Washington, D.C. Its mission is to focus public attention on emerging privacy and related human rights issues. And they have pursued several successful consumer privacy complaints with the U.S. Federal Trade Commissioner concerning Snapchat, for example, fault privacy technology, WhatsApp privacy policy after acquisition by Facebook, and changes in user privacy setting. So Google rollout of Google Buzz and Microsoft hailstorm login issues. So all of those issues have been pursued by Epic. Then there is another organization known as PI, which is Privacy International. That is a charity organization in working in UK. And their priority areas are challenging data exploitation, building the global privacy movement, and contesting surveillance. So let's summarize today's module. We have learned about privacy, its definition, data points from where the privacy, uh, from where the data is being generated in your life and how to handle. And then we have seen that international privacy control bodies are available in the world. So if you have an issue, you can write to them and they can fight cases on behalf of the users as they have pursued different cases in the history.